Well, the economy may be growing strongly, but not everyone's riding the wave of prosperity. Not so long ago, Norfolk Island was a popular tourist destination, thanks to its fascinating history of convict settlements and bounty mutineers. As well, locals don't pay Australian income tax, and that's the way they like it, or at least did. Now Norfolk's economy is in ruins and they want the federal government to bail them out. But as Tracy Bowden reports, the government wants something in return. Norfolk Island sits in the South Pacific Ocean, about 1,600 kilometres northeast of Sydney. These rugged cliffs and rolling hills have been home to convicts, mutineers and, more recently, tourists. But now this pretty spot is the setting for a very ugly financial crisis. How would you describe things on Norfolk Island at the moment? Parlous, desperation, uh, uh, uncertainty, lack of confidence. This little island's in a state of recession um, and a lot of people are finding it very difficult to make ends meet. OK, well, we'll move along to the substantive matters. And the Norfolk Island is part of the Commonwealth of Australia but is a self-governing external territory. A legislative assembly headed by Chief Minister David Buffett runs most of the island's affairs and the 2,000 or so locals pay no Australian income tax. Now this fiercely independent community desperately needs outside help. I worry. We all worry. That's part of the difficulty of this community at this moment. It's, it's tremendous stress for each member of the Norfolk Island community. I command this ship in the name of the King! Tourism is Norfolk Island's only significant industry, trading on the dramatic tale of the mutiny on the bounty. But a combination of the global financial crisis and overwhelming infrastructure costs has hit hard. Tourism has slumped by more than 30%, Employment is way down and 25% of homes on the island are for sale. People who have had to split up their families by, sending, by going offshore to work and sending money back. I know there are people who have simply closed up their homes here on the island and abandoned them because they can't sell them. There's no resale market. Norfolk Island is so remote that everything here costs more and it has its own GST of 12%. At the supermarket, a litre of fresh milk is around $7. Twelve months ago, church groups set up a food bank and demand just keeps growing. We have increased from about 30 individuals a month to now that we're feeding about 90 individuals a month. Now that includes children, that's not just adults. Heart medications, diabetes medications, cancer medications, uh, anything that they're taking is so much more expensive here. The Norfolk Women's Forum meets every week and their biggest fear is spiralling health debts. Islanders pay a levy for health cover but many can no longer afford the upfront payments. Many families on the island can't afford to go to the hospital because we don't have Medicare or the PBS on the island. And, Tracy, we need it immediately. Donald Christian Reynolds is a seventh-generation descendant of bounty mutineer Fletcher Christian, proud of his heritage and his home. The drop in tourism has all but destroyed his livelihood, but he believes the limited mental health services here have played a part in a much greater tragedy. Yeah, this is, this is Michelle here. And, uh... She loved life, you know. She was a very effervescent uh, girl and she, she just had, she had a lot of fun about her. This is uh, Christmas in uh, 2000. Donald Christian Reynolds' daughter, Michelle, struggled for years and was eventually diagnosed with schizophrenia. But there is no psychiatrist based on the island and no formal system to treat people suffering from mental illness. The psychiatrist who comes here once, maybe twice a year, uh, he uh, sat with me and said, you know, we have a very, very sick, mentally health sick girl here. And, and that really, I suppose, was the biggest realisation and the big... Sorry.
Michelle Reynolds was living in run-down hospital units, receiving minimal supervision. She um, was mixing alcohol and then she was taking Finergan as well, which she was able to buy over the counter at the chemist here. And it, nothing was really done about that. Last October, she was found dead in her unit. A coronial inquiry will be held later this year. If Michelle had just died and was buried and, 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 and nothing comes out of her legacy of why she died, um, it would be a complete waste. So, you know, we're trying to, to make sure that that doesn't happen to anybody else. Eighteen months ago, the Chief Minister entered a five-year reform agreement with the Federal Minister for Regional Australia, Simon Crean. Under the deal, Norfolk Island will join the Australian tax system in return for access to a range of services, including health. We are saying that we would like GST and we are saying that we would like the health care and Medicare and PBS arrangement to commence forthwith. They should have thought about that some years ago uh, when they were resisting joining the tax system. These things can't be switched on and off overnight. They've always known that their own health system is unsustainable. I am prepared to work with them, but you can't salami slice the solution to this. It has to be part of a comprehensive package. The locals here cherish their tiny island and its unique way of life. And at first there was enormous opposition to any suggestion of Commonwealth government involvement or influence. But as economic times have got tougher and tougher, people have decided that not only do they need change, but the sooner the better. Local businessman Brad Forrester runs the island's only factory, producing liqueurs and soft drinks for the tourist market. He says it'll be hard to boost the tourism trade without a clear timeline for the reforms. I think the immediate thing that has to happen in terms of uh, economic stimulus is more certainty. Yes, the federal government might be coming in. When is it going to come in? You know, we need to have more certainty about that and certainly more certainty about what programs are going to be available when. We don't know where we're going. Yet there's a core group which remains opposed to any federal involvement in the running of their island. To think that our own politicians would sell us out for a few shekels uh, without consulting the people. Uh, hopefully common sense will prevail. Michael King is a member of the Assembly, but believes the system he's a part of was a disaster from the start. The style of self-government that was given to the island some 33 years ago was totally inappropriate for Norfolk Island. And I think that's the root of the difficulties. Some people have said that the writing was on the wall, that you should have acted sooner. Should we have gone to the Commonwealth earlier? Uh, there could be an argument for that. There could be an argument for that. Uh, Norfolk Island, however, has taken the view uh, until recent times that it would want to find solutions to its own problems uh, and to be able to uh, generate as much funding within its own resources. But Simon Crean says the island can no longer defer the tough decisions and rely on the Commonwealth to keep bailing it out. I'm genuine in trying to find a solution, but it won't work if the demands are simply on the Commonwealth. Tracy Bowden reporting.